today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I've created this nice ambient lighting effect illuminating from behind this cheap IKEA mirror. So here we have pretty much all the parts that we will need to complete this project. We've got ourselves a LED driver, a uh, plug, UK plug, um, obviously whichever country you're in, whichever plug you need. Um, I've got myself a little bit of flex here and we've got ourselves our LEDs. Now before we get started, now's a great time to mention my sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay offer a high quality manufacturing service from standard prototype boards to flex rigid PCBs and even assembly. Why not take advantage of their $5 welcome voucher and get your first prototype boards free. Already have an open source PCB design? Join their shared projects area where you can list your design for sale and PCB Way will donate 10% of the PCB cost to you as a way of saying thank you for your contribution to the open source community. Links are in the description below. Now what I'm gonna do here is we'll leave the uh, plug separate for now. We've got our uh, LED tape here. Now, obviously, we're not going to need to use the whole length of this, um, but I will uh, get the wires connected first, and uh, then we will uh, stick it on the uh, reverse side of the mirror and uh, get everything uh, connected up. So it's quite a simple project to do. Um, if you're not confident with uh, wiring up plugs or anything, please don't do this yourself. Get an electrician to uh, do it for you. Um, like I say, it's just a little project that I decided to do um, to add sort of a nice ambient lighting effect. So we've got here our cheap little LED driver. This should be absolutely fine. This is an 18 watt rated one, uh, 12 volts output, uh, 1.5 amps, more than enough. Probably could have gone for something smaller. As we see, it's difficult to uh, sort of know that, you know, that you want something ideally that's really, really flat that could go behind the mirror. Um, obviously if say because this is a rented property I can't sort of be making loads of holes in the walls but uh, if you did sort of you know you own your own property or something then you could actually put this in the wall um, behind and make it a completely uh, sort of hidden installation so we've got here our outputs here and we've got here our wires from our LED tape so I'm just going to strip these back a little bit more they haven't left uh, much on there. And um, what we will do is solder these together. And we will also want some heat shrink as well. So grab ourselves some heat shrink. And uh, just snip that in half. This is where I find I've chosen the wrong size. Nope, just ideal. You want to try and get the uh, closest match to the uh, size of the cable as you can so that it uh, shrinks down nicely and properly. Now I'm going to try and use my uh, little helping hand here just to uh, sort of hold these uh, wires together so we can have a uh, much neater solder joint. So what I think I might do as well is put a slightly bigger piece of heat shrink over as well. Um, let's see. Go with a piece about this size. And that way we can sort of put it all together, sort of one unit. Um, right, so let's get this in here. You could just twist the uh, wires together and add some solder on as well. That is another way of doing it. I just prefer to try and get a nice sort of neat neat 
neatness there. So grab ourselves some solder. Tin the iron and we will try and get these together. So I'm gonna flow some solder on there. And just give that a couple seconds to cool down. And as you can see there, we've got a reasonably nice joint. It's not perfect, but uh, more than adequate for our needs. So now we just got to go ahead and do the same with our ground wire. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure that those connections are good and they uh, seem to be. You also want to make sure there's no sort of sharp, jagged areas that can poke through the, uh, the heat shrink. So we'll just smooth that out a bit. So now we just need to get our heat shrink on and uh, that will. Uh, Secure those together. Be careful not to uh, not to heat the other bit at the same time. Otherwise, uh, you won't be able to slide it over when you need to. So, just going to shrink those down there. And then we we'll just bring our bigger piece over. like so, and we will shrink that one down. Now you can see we have a nice, good, nice looking connection there to the LEDs. Now, if you did want to reduce the uh, brightness of the LEDs, I haven't tried this yet, so I may have to modify and uh, actually reduce the uh, brightness in the future. You can obviously just add like a uh, little inline resistor of uh, appropriate value to uh, drop the uh, LED brightness down. So the next stage is going to be to get this connected up to our cable. So I will go ahead and do that. Same principle, I'm just gonna cut this cable use lots of heat shrink and solder onto here. This is AC, so it doesn't really matter which way the wires go around. And then I will get the plug wired up to the other end. Now, while I'm doing this, just remember this side is going to be your mains voltage, 240 volts here in the uh, UK, 120 elsewhere. So like I say, if this is not something you're confident with, do not do it because you don't want to create a dangerous situation for yourself or anybody else. You could certainly use um, some like Wago connectors or something and have this uh, sort of in its own separate little junction box if you uh, would like to do it that way. I'm just simply soldering it because I want to try and create as little sort of clutter underneath the mirror as possible so that I just have the sort of thing plugged in and this just sat underneath. But like I say, you could use a separate box um, and put these connectors in a uh, Wago connector or chop block type thing inside its own enclosure to make it a lot safer. So there we have it. I've got this soldered on here, two layers of heat shrink, shrink, heat shrink for extra safety. And uh, like I say, you could put this in a box. Another thing you could do is add a inline switch if you wanted to. Um, I'm planning on probably leaving this running 24 seven. It's not gonna draw too much power. Um, may turn it off at night time. Otherwise I think it might keep me awake because of the uh, proximity to the location and the bedroom. Now I've not shown you how to wire a plug because if you don't know how to wire a plug, you should not be doing this. So the next stage will be to plug this in and make sure that it actually lights up. All right, so we've got an extension lead here. So let's watch out for bangs. No pops and bangs, but we do have illumination. And uh, yeah, my uh, studio lights are gonna be swamping this out. I'll just turn those off. 
and you can see there it's not too bad that should be uh, reasonably okay if it does sort of get too I don't think I'm not too worried about warmth because it's going to be on the back of the mirror that'll take any heat away um, yeah if you wanted to dim it down a bit you could add a uh, resistor or so right so the next stage is going to be to get this on the back of the mirror okay sorry about the uh, dark lighting here I'm in the hallway as we need a decent space to uh, lay this mirror down now it's been sat here a while and it's collected some dust so the first thing we're going to do is to remove any excess dust that's accumulated on the back and I'm also going to use some IPA isopropyl alcohol just to make sure that the surface is fully clean so that our uh, LED tape has the best chance of staying stuck down so you don't need to do this step but it is advisable just to make sure that the uh, the strip will stay stuck down right so that's done this mirror has got a kind of like plasticky film on the back um, not quite sure why yes yeah, so this is just a mirror from IKEA that I brought quite a few years ago I'm not sure they still sell the same ones I've actually got two there's another one in the uh, living room which I may consider doing the same thing to, um, but I'll have to have the wires running down the uh, wall. So I'll have to decide if it's gonna look a bit too unsightly. So now that our surface is nice and clean, we can start rolling out some of our tape. Now this mirror can go uh, sort of either way um, round as such. So I think we'll just start with the uh, driver down at this end. Now, ideally, I want this to sort of sit below the mirror. So we want to make sure that we allow enough free cabling here. Also, because the tape's going to run in the middle of the mirror, we don't want it to sort of start or finish too close to the uh, top and bottom. Otherwise, that could uh, sort of spoil the visual effect slightly to get a bit more light bleed at the uh, top and bottom. So I think probably about sort of there should be a good starting point. And uh, you could mark out where the middle of the uh, mirror is if you want to. I'm just gonna eyeball it. I think we will uh, get away with that perfectly fine. So we'll go for about there, I think. Right, I'm just going to run it up just to make sure that I'm happy that we are going to be more or less in the center. And I think we are. So now it's just a process of uh, peeling off the backing and uh, continuing to stick the tape down. If you don't get it perfect the first time, you can probably get away with uh, pulling it off once. see I'm just making slight adjustments here and there I want to try and get as reasonably even light pattern I'm um, just sliding the mirror along it's on carpet so it shouldn't cause any uh, damage now of course once we get to this top end we are going to need to cut the uh, tape at the appropriate length and I think probably if we cut it at this point here I think that will be uh, just right sorry about that right so where did we say we're going to cut it about here um, could use a pair of scissors if you want I'm just going to use my uh, snips be more than adequate for the job and then we just need to stick this remaining section down like so and uh, just going to gently press on it just to make sure 
that it is stuck down and in place. It's quite a nice tape, this one. I've not had tape quite as thin as this one before. Now on this area here, obviously we're gonna get a bit of movement. So we can put a bit of tape just to secure the wires, or you could just use like a uh, dab of hot melt glue. Um, something like that, so I'll probably just add a, a little bit of tape just to uh, stop this from uh, sort of wiggling around and uh, pulling itself back off. And then the next stage will be to get it mounted back on the wall and uh, turn it back on. And there we are, all back on the wall, and I think that looks quite nice. All I've done is just simply stuck the uh, LED driver down there with just a bit of double-sided sticky tape to the wall. That should do fine. If it comes off, there is a uh, hole for uh, putting a screw in. And as you can see, it's not night time, but it's sort of dullish here. And yeah, that gives a really nice effect. So if you've enjoyed this video, guys, please do give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you're not already subscribed and uh, do consider making a donation via Patreon if you wish to help support the channel in that way. And I will see you soon for the next one. Cheers.